R50 looking good with the 16 millimeter. Here we have the Pocket 3. Pocket 3 looks fantastic. Uh, exposure is set to zero on both of these cameras. White balance is 4,900 and this is looking good. Here's the R50. Now I did tweak on the settings a little bit in Final Cut on both of them. Pretty much, I'm not trying to match them. I'm just trying to see what I can get out of both of them if I were only using the R50 or the Pocket 3. Here's the R50, looks fantastic. And here's the, the Pocket 3. I mean, it looks really good, really, really good. R50 looks good, colors look great, the exposure looks fine. Now here, I do notice something with, with the Pocket 3. It looks a little bit overexposed, so all I needed to do was just bring down the exposure to like negative one or something, but here, let me pause it, boom, boom, boom. And as you can see, yeah, she looks a little hot here in the chest and in this area. Now, I'm not gonna fault the Pocket 3 for this because I could have easily just lowered the exposure just a little bit on the Pocket 3, but this is just how it was performing with me just, you know, running and gunning. Pocket 3 looks good though, that looks fantastic. We go back to the R50, yeah. And then of course we have the R50 on the, what is this called? The Zuyin uh, Crane M3. Here we have the R50, look at all those colors. Now this is where things get trippy because bam, look at that. That's the Pocket 3. There's just a bunch of color here. This looks really good for the Pocket 3. I just, I love how this looks. This is crazy. This is crazy. And then R50 looks good, looks phenomenal. We go to the Pocket 3, that looks good. She looks a little hot in the face, but it's starting to properly expose. Here's the R50, looks good, looks good. And then we go over to the Pocket 3, and that looks great as well. Look at all those colors in the back. Look at those colors in the back. That's, that's awesome. I freaking love that. Look at those colors. And then we scroll over to the R50, the Pocket 3. And then this room was very challenging for the Pocket 3. But look at all these colors that the R50 produces. This is fantastic. I am not shooting in HDR. I'm shooting, I'm shooting in standard mode on the R50. Pocket 3, looks good, looks good. We have a lot of color. Now, something I did notice while editing is that Pocket 3 has like less dynamic range, whatever, not by much, right? Um, but look, there's a Pocket 3. That just looks really good. Like I wouldn't mind using the Pocket 3 if I didn't have the R50, um, but at the same time, the Pocket 3 just does very well. Look, look at the R50. R50, fantastic, phenomenal. Pocket 3, Pocket 3. Oh, no, no, no. This is not Pocket 3. So check this out. Bam. What is this? What's going on here? This is actually the Pocket 1. That's crazy. It doesn't look terrible, right? But this is the Pocket 1. Uh, so I had all three cameras set up together. Uh, but this is the only clip I have the pocket one. Here's a pocket one. Now check this out Bam that's the pocket one with no editing. So that's like out of the camera pocket one. Yeah, that's That's like terrible, right? But and then we fix it up a little and can we're able to bring that out from the pocket one and then we move over, boom, 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 to a different location, different spot. And then look at that, that's the R50. When you go from the Pocket 1 to the R50, the R50 looks like IMAX, right? Look how awesome that R50 looks. Um, beautiful, beautiful. We move over to the Pocket 3, and here's the Pocket 3. The Pocket 3 does look better than the Pocket 1, absolutely. It's just, it's got more color. It was easier to edit. Let's just put it that way, right? It was easier to edit, and um, there's just less noise. But, and more deep, it, Pocket 3 is just easier to edit, and it looks better. Um, pocket 3, 
Uh, beautiful. Love it. Love it. Absolutely worth it. Here we have the R50. And then we go out of the Pocket 3. The Pocket 3 still looks kind of like, like a GoPro or an action camera with like higher quality, you know, uh, image. But it's doing good. It's doing good. Here's the R50 doing fantastic. Yep. Looking good. R50. To be honest, like, that's the thing about what, what's going on. What's going on here is if you have the R50, you get a small gimbal like this, and life's going to be fantastic, right? Um, this is pretty pretty portable, pretty cool, pretty solid. And then we have the, the pocket, which is a pocketable camera. Um, of course, the bottom line is you could do more with the R50 because it's also a photography camera. You can change lenses. You could do a lot more. But still, there's potential in this where you're still kind of compact and you have really good quality. And then you're way more compact with the Pocket 3. And you have, you know, fantastic quality for the size and the price. The quality is outstanding. And then right here, things get a little weird, right? Because I think this, the Pocket 3 just struggled with the reds. Uh, I think the color red, I don't know, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but I think the color red... Um, takes away a lot of light. So the Pocket 3 kept overexposing even more than it usually does. Uh, but here's a Pocket 3. Not bad, not bad. And there's the R50. Big difference. More dynamic range. Much nicer. And here's a Pocket 3. Yeah, it, it's having a hard time exposing her. Uh, R50. Colors look nice. The, the colors look fantastic in the Pocket 3. The exposure looks good. It's just you have less dynamic range, it seems, right? Pocket uh, Pocket 3 right here. So she looks a little bit overexposed, right? Just a little bit overexposed. And so what I would do is probably bring down the exposure just a little bit, or maybe not. This looks good. It's just you can tell that you have less dynamic range with the Pocket 3 than you do with the R50. Here is the Pocket 3. Okay, so yeah, let's check this out. Here is the Pocket 3 with the editing, and here is the Pocket 3 with no editing. It looks way overexposed, right? It's like the color red in the back is taking away so much light that the Pocket's like flipping out and overexposing the image. Um, so I could tell in the screen that it was pretty hot, that she was looking very hot, so... I left it alone, and I just figured, let's see what I can do in, in post, right? Um, but here it is in post. I, I believe that if I would have taken control of the camera of the Pocket 3 and lowered the exposure just a little bit, um, I wouldn't have had hard, I wouldn't have had a hard time editing this to look better, but it still looks good. Still looks good, no complaints, no complaints, right? We're back outside. R50, looking good, looking good. Pocket 3, looking fantastic. The colors are there. And, and I wasn't really trying to match them. I'm just trying to get the best out of each camera the way I would edit if, if I only had this one or if I only had the R50. Yeah, so this is cool. I dig this. Um, the Pocket 3. I love this camera, the R50, I love this camera. So if you're looking to, you know, get better quality than the Pocket 3, but still remain semi-compact, um, this is not a bad idea. And here what we have is the, the Crane 3 with the R50. And then I have this plate by, um, who is it? I think it's you. It's Ulanzi, right? It's Ulanzi that it's made and built for the crane. So it just works perfectly. This slides in there and we're completely balanced. Um, yeah. So I dig this. Look at this. Slide it out. Right. Slide this out. We're cool. We're cool. Put it back. And then slide this back in here. Boom, boom, boom. Snap it in there. We are 
good to go. If I could only have one, obviously it'd be this because I can take pictures and use all my lenses. But if I'm just traveling and take it easy, yeah, of course. There's nothing wrong with this. This guy is freaking awesome. <laughs>